this. I'ma tell y'all like my grandma told me, it's time in to tell them what's right. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, sir. Welcome in H Town. This is the Solid Grip. I'm your host, J.R. Wilson, along with me, my co-host, Ping Wilson, and we are coming to you live at five, no time for jive. So look, relax your rear and allow us to soothe your ear. So, Pop, we're going to get straight into this, man. But first off, how you doing, man? Doing great, man. That's good, man. I'm glad. Uh, you healthy, man. Everything going all right. No coughing, no sneezing, no you know, uh, shortness of breath, anything like that, huh? <laughs> None of the above. Okay, good, because we are definitely not practicing social distancing right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, let's get straight off into this, man. So, as y'all can see right now, we wearing LeBron, jerseys, Le LeBron James jerseys. If you can't see, then I'm going to hold mine up like this here, okay? Now, here's the thing. I am a Houston Rockets fan, okay? I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. But, man, I love LeBron James, man, just like I love Michael Jordan, just like I love Kobe Bryant and Magic Johnson and Dr. J and et cetera. I will go on and take the whole period of this show to name all the greats that I love. But, man, right now, uh, the focus is on LeBron James, man. And so here's the thing. The question is, Pop, right now the season has been suspended. But as of the point where the season suspended it, who do you think the MVP would have been given to, LeBron James or Giannis Antetokounmpo? I think Giannis had it up until the last three weeks before the season stopped. Really? I do. I think he. I think he had edged LeBron out. But in those last three weeks, LeBron not only beat Giannis. Okay. He also beat Kawhi and the Clippers. Right. And I think beyond a shadow of a doubt, and if you just look at it, Rich, let's, let's unpack it, okay? Okay. The Lakers were talented last year, but young, okay? Right. And and LeBron got hurt, and, and the young boys could not carry that team. Now they have the second best record in the league. He's still putting up big numbers, 25 26, 27 a game. Right. Leading the league in, in assists. Should have added a great player in Anthony Davis. But the surrounding cast is not as good as it was last year, Rich. You don't think so? No, sir. No. Are you sir. talking about the bench or the starting five? I'm talking oh. about the starting five. Okay, okay. Last year you had Ingram. Right, you had Ingram. You had Ball. Ingram was very inconsistent, okay? Ball couldn't shoot or hit the broad side of a ball. But but, the, but they both were top draft picks. They right. both were number two draft picks right. in the first round. So you're saying they had the potential to be. And Kuzma great. was in the, in the lineup. And he's not, he has not played well this year. As a matter of fact, he was on a trading block. And I, I don't know what it is that... You know, he, he must tell Jeannie Buss, hey, listen, Miss Buss, I just, just give me another chance. But he hadn't played well this year. Nowhere near what he played last year. Yeah. And nah, so I, I think by the hair of his chinny chin chin, <laughs> if the season, if they if, if the commissioner say, hey, the regular season is over, we're just going to go straight to the playoffs, LeBron would win it. You know what? I'm going to say something that is in complete opposition. And this is going to sound completely Homer and bias. Russell Westbrook, to me, probably would be the individual that I would have handed the trophy to. Part of this is because I like a tenor kumpo, but something about that cat rubs me wrong. First of all, because I'm territorial by nature, <laughs> right? All that talking down he was doing on James Harden, I didn't like that, man. I, I I didn't like that you were, you know, your little innuendos that you uh, alluded to with Charles Barkley and, you know, post-game interview. I, I, I didn't like that because, you know, you might not like Harden game. We know Charles Barkley. He don't like nobody, okay? He don't like that bald head when he look in the mirror in the morning, <laughs> man. But that's okay. That's cool. But, you know... Harden don't say nothing to nobody, man. He just play his game. Agreed. And, and I just thought, 
you know, those little things that were said, I ain't like that. No, that ain't got nothing to do with this game, but I told you, I prefaced before I said something, this is a biased opinion. And I think Russell Westbrook, man, he just came on, especially in the last 15, 20 games. Agreed. And just, oh, man, he turned it up. So much so, man, that the Houston Rockets – whole scheme, is, it seems to be circumferenced around Russell Westbrook now as opposed to James Harden, even though I still feel like that's his team. But LeBron James is always going to be in the conversation. Right. Every year, man. Right. He's just a perennial winner, a perennial all-star, and just, he's an MVP. He's, you can give him the trophy every year, man, if you really wanted to. So, I would have put Russell Westbrook up along with uh, LeBron James. Atena Kumpo, he's he's a great player, man. He's really upped his game, man, especially in the last couple of years. I just don't know if I would have gave it to him, man. I just I just don't know, man. I I don't know if I could have did that. But especially last year, Rich. I, I think James Harden clearly should have won back to back MVPs, okay? Oh yeah, he got raw, man. Yeah, they, you know, they passed that dog on trophy around like, you know, duck duck goose or something like that, man. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I, I, you know, it's the same thing the year that, that Steph Curry got the MVP uh, with a unanimous decision. You know, right. I just was like, what, what, what is everybody looking at? But the leagues are set up around the stars. Exactly. And when you got a star, you want that star to shine. And because nobody likes James Harden's game, he is always getting the short end of the stick. Albeit, I was talking about Russell Westbrook receiving it. I think Harden was definitely in the running. But I wouldn't have handed him the trophy this year. So, speaking of LeBron, this whole social distancing thing, I think has either enlightened people or frightened people because LeBron talking about, hey, man, I ain't high-fiving no more. Exactly. So, I, I feel like when this social distancing thing is over, because now it's been extended to April 30th, I believe, I think people are going to have a hard time because I, I know me, naturally, I'm bring it in. Right. I'm like, you know, shake your hand, bring it in with the, you know, little half hug or right. whatever, slap on the back. But I think people are going to be very apprehensive about that because this thing is a killer. But LeBron said, hey, man, no more high fives, man. And so think about celebrities. Now you don't really see people. They still do autographs, but what they're doing now is taking selfies. Exactly. So when you take a selfie with somebody, you hugged up on them, you all up on them. And so when I heard LeBron said I wasn't high-fiving no more, I thought to myself, man, this could really affect how people react with one another. What, how you feel about that? Rich, I, I heard something, and, and it's, it, it's been on my mind ever since I heard it. I can't remember where I heard it from, but it was a, it was a pundit. But he, he's saying that between 12 and 18 months, Yeah before you see people high-fiving, hugging, whatever, because until everybody is texted, yeah. tested, and has the, and the vaccine has been discovered, right. and you get a shot saying, hey, okay, just like polio or any other type of, 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 of uh, virus that, that, that you get a vaccine for, that we won't see it. Yeah. And not only in basketball, in football, at church, anywhere. Yeah. Until that 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 person can you just like uh, I've, I've been vaccinated. Well, I guess it's on this other arm. But anyway, you know you, you've been vaccinated, okay? Right. For for polio or smallpox, and so this I believe that I, I truly believe that until there is a vaccine, hmm. and everybody has been 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 you know you, in other words when you come in the arenas now. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to show your card and say you've been vaccinated. Okay, <laughs> you've been like vaccinated. H-E-B, man. You're going to H-E-B right now. They're at the front door with hand sanitizer. They're at the front door with the little wipes. And, you know, normally you can get the wipes to wipe off your basket before all this happened. But now they're like, no, 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 no. You're going to put hand sanitizer on your hands, and, and you're going to wipe your basket down before you come in this place. And some places, you know, hospitals and stuff before you walk in the door, they got the little temperature thing. Oh, you yeah. it at your head. Oh, yeah? Check your temperature. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 let's tip our hands to the brave men and women out oh, there. Oh, no doubt, man. The, the lawyer, I mean, the nurses, the doctors, yeah. all the first responders. 
Hey guys, we love you all. Absolutely. We know you're putting your, your life on the line. Right. So many of them right now has the virus. So many of them, a lot of them have even passed away. Hey, keep doing what you're doing. God loves you. We love you and stuff. And we know you're doing what you enjoy doing. You know, and so, hey, we, we tip our hats to you. Absolutely, because uh, the doctor uh, in Iran, and I, I don't remember her name, but the doctor in Iran that was helping a lot of people with the coronavirus, she just recently died from the virus. Wow. And she was, they were being careful, man. They were right. wearing masks, wearing the latex gloves, uh, trying to keep everything, uh, you know, sprayed down uh, with, with germ killers and everything like that. But, man, this virus is, is it's a serious thing, man. It's, in, it's airborne, and it's... It's, it's getting into people real quick. It's affecting them. It's attacking that respiratory system. So definitely shout out to every each and every individual that is on the front line. And I heard a nurse say today, it, we're not on the front line. We're the last line of defense. The exactly. front line people are the individuals who are sheltered in so that they can, uh, you know, keep individuals from having to even come see them. Because now once they get there, they have to treat them. Right. So man having lack of supplies and still having to deal with those things they're getting it done a lot of people are recovering from it and i want to shout out to all my ups drivers uh, i'm a ups driver myself and not just ups i would reluctantly say fedex okay as well as, well as uh, dhl and lso and uh you know the united states postal services like look man we are touching three or four hundred packages every day foreign and domestic okay so we at risk. And if you think about it, our lives are on the line delivering these packages. And so it's not a pat on the back uh, for us per se, but just for these things being able to be, to be delivered to people to benefit them, especially when it comes to uh, medicine and pharmaceutical companies so that they can get the medicine distributed out to who it needs to go to. So anyways, man, that's kind of a subject, man, that just, you know, it keeps on flushing into what we talk about because that's just how big it is. But let's talk about something crazy right now, okay? <laughs> I know I mean, where you're going, Rich. Something absolutely insane, all right? Pop, man, you know what? I'm a lover of football, period. I am a Houston Texans fan, but I like the Steelers too, man. I really do. I like what they stand for. I like why you like them. Uh, I like a lot of the players on the squad. And there's one individual that I do like, okay? And I'll mention this a little later about what I think about this individual pertaining to the Houston Texans. But this dude is outside of his mind, okay? And this particular individual I'm talking about just did a, a uh, had a conversation with Floyd Mayweather, okay? And in this conversation, and I'm gonna mention the dude's name, I'm, I'm trying to build the suspense, okay? In this dog on me conversation they have, Floyd Mayweather is sitting up there telling them, hey man, look, it ain't, it don't matter how many times you get, you know, arrested, what that's got to do with you catching the football. Who am I talking about? Antonio Brown. Okay? So, A B, it has been emphatically said by Bruce Arians. <laughs> he don't want A B on their squad, don't man. Want it, I don't care how much Tom Brady likes him. Tom Brady said he would let that man stay in his house with his wife and his kids. It don't matter. Bruce Arians, is, he said no. And I, I, I wish I had the uh, the clip in front of me, but you know, they was basically asking Bruce Arians, hey, uh, you know, AB is out there or whatever. Uh, you know, what you think about getting him? You know, Tom likes him, and Bruce Arians was like, no, no, no. And y'all know Bruce Arians, man. He don't look. You ain't got to read his mind. Whatever comes up, comes out. And so he said, uh, he like, no, no. And uh, I don't even think we have the money for that or whatever, but he's not a fit. And they was like, well, uh, you know, we, you guys still might be able to get him in, get him on a bargain deal. And Bruce Arians was like, no. So, man, what, what's up with AB, man? Do you think that he going to be able to get back in the NFL or what? You know, Rich, he keeps taking two steps forward, three steps backwards. All the time. And, and, and you know, we talked about it on the show in one of my earlier episodes and we both agreed that he'll get back in the NFL one day, but Rich, I, I begin to doubt it. Yeah. I mean, you're trying to hook up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, with Brady. You've already had a run in with Bruce Arian when you went Pittsburgh. Man, I would have been on my best behavior, man. Yeah. 
like I said, I would have been at Bruce Arians' door begging him to give me an opportunity. Instead, you hooking up with Floyd Mayweather, okay, a diva like yeah, you. Right, right. A great fighter, but a diva. And putting this stuff on Instagram, A.B., A.B., listen to me, brother. If you want another opportunity to play in the National Football League, you got to clean it up. Yeah. You got to clean it up, man. Top to bottom. Yeah. You got you got to really really be humble, brother. You got to really really do some things and stuff. Number one, you got to be clear of this 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 incident, AB. Right, right. And but quit, even quit exposing so, man, yourself so much on social media. Like, have you not figured out by now that these things are doing not their detriment to you? Why are you expo you. Why are you exposing yourself like that? Look, if you're trying to clean up your act, you are a great receiver, man. I'm sure all 32 teams would love to take a chance on you, but how are they going to take a chance on you and you acting like a doggone fool, man? So here's the thing, Pop, and I'm going to say it. I don't care what nobody thinks. Bill O'Brien is probably the worst general manager of all time. I won't even sit here and give a rundown. If you want a rundown of all the foolish decisions Bill O'Brien has made since he's become the general manager, then check out Ross Tucker from the athletic, okay? But I'm going to just say this. If Bill O'Brien is dumb enough to trade away DeAndre Hopkins, arguably top five receiver, arguably the best receiver in the NFL. Top, top three, Rich. For basically nothing, right? Because we got a, a second-round pick, but that second round pick is usually something that would be attached to an individual that a team is trying to get rid of so that they don't have to pay that money that the individual is not worth. Right. So in essence, we really got a fourth round pick for DeAndre Hopkins. Right. If Bill O'Brien yeah. is stupid enough to do that, and hey, Bill O'Brien, hey, stupid, if you're going to do that, go get A.B. Go get A.B. We could use him, man. Oh, my goodness. We could use him because I was thinking about somebody like Brandon Cooks, right? Yeah who's on the trading block right now, and it looks like Philly's going to get him, and Philly needs some real help at wide receiver out there. They ain't got nobody. But I said, man, we're not going to get him. But they ain't going to get A.B. Don't try him out. You, you you made all these other foolish decisions. Why don't you go on and try him out? Because I don't see how he's going to get back in the NFL, Pop. I just don't see it. I don't either, Rich. It's so sad, man. You're talking about a, uh, for sure Hall of Fame career and stuff, and he may not even may not make it. Man, that's that's crazy to even think about. As great as he was, man, right. as great as he was, and 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 him and 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 uh, uh, the running back for the Jets, I can't even think of his name right. Le'Veon now. Bell. Le'Veon Bell. Him and Le'Veon Bell conspired together against the Steelers. Man, what yep. y'all had was great. Yeah. It was a matter of time. Just a matter of time. A matter of time. Add, before. add some defensive players. If they both were still in Pittsburgh, we'd be the favorite to win it all. Oh, no doubt. Y'all would have won it last year and the year before last. Right. No doubt about it. I don't, I don't, ain't no doubt in my mind. It was way too much talent. Then you had the defense. Y'all was trying to develop that right. as they were exiting. Exactly. And it was getting to that point. You had gotten TJ White. You had Bud Dupree. You, you know, Jarvis Jones ain't work out. You, know, you had Artie Burns. Now you got Minka Fitzpatrick. You know, and so you guys are looking good. And so, man, Big Ben just, I mean, he would have lit it up with, with A.B. on one side, Juju on the other side. No doubt. Um, you know, your tight end, James, and now y'all got Ebron. Ebron. Oh, man, y'all yes, would have been lighting And y'all still going to light it up, but y'all would have been lighting it up. But, man, I'm just, A.B., man, I, I, I'm going to concur with my father, man. Get your act together, man. I mean, really, man, keep your nose clean. Quit talking to people. If you're going to talk to Floyd, just pick up the phone and call him. You know what I'm saying? Don't do it over social media. Oh, I'm talking to Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather got his money, man. Yeah, he, right. His money's set in stone, man. He got the remedy. His money is, is, is flowing through all different avenues, all different streams. I don't think your money flowing like that. Not flowing at all, Rich. And, and I'm just being honest with you. I'm just somebody that's being honest with you and telling you, look, man, man, you way too talented. You way too talented, man, to be out here acting a doggone fool, man. Instead of being on that field, man, catching balls. Uh, you know, forget what Floyd Mayweather says. He ain't lacing your pockets up. You know what I'm saying? He ain't got no football team to put you on. Talking about, yeah, yeah. how you going to tell that man, 
even if you go to jail 30 or 40 times, <laughs> it don't have no bearing on you catching the ball. I think it does if it's locked sir. up. You can't sir. catch no balls. Catch some prison balls. Yeah, that's it. You know, <laughs> that's it. And I don't think you want that in your life, man. So, you know, here's the thing, man. While we on the NFL, there's another individual, man, that I really don't know how to define right now. But, man, he had a video I saw the other day, man, and the dude is jacked, Cam Newton. He's jacked, man. He is. He's working out. It looks like he's off that old crazy vegan diet. I, I can't stand with football players, man, stop eating meat. But he's jacked, man. And uh, he said that the, the Panthers gave up on him, you know. But, you know, he's been hurt. I don't know if he's still the Cam Newton that he was in 2015 when he made it to the Super Bowl and won the MVP and, uh, accounted for 50 touchdowns, I believe 35 in the end, 15 on the ground. But man, he's still a formidable quarterback. So, do you, do you think he'll end up somewhere, Pop? And if he does, where? Oh, that's a 64 dollar question, Rich. I'm, I'm kind of shocked, and I'm, I mean that that Belichick hadn't swooped in there and got him. But you know, I mean, but maybe Belichick want to show the world I'm gonna make another Tom Brady. Uh, there's still a couple teams out there. There's San Diego out there, and a couple more and stuff, but. I guess I'm just shocked, though, that even even the Bears. I mean, why why didn't the Bears take a fly on him? I mean, I know they, you know, they just made a trade for somebody and stuff. But it wouldn't that be a something, man, if him and Jamin Winston both ended up not playing this year? You know, it's not that a team would not pick them up because somebody would sign Cam Newton. But man, he gonna have to ride the pine. Ride right the bench. He gonna have to ride the pine. That's unheard of. Rich, because we talking about the Heisman Trophy one. We talking about former MVP, thirty one years old. I know it, man. But we could say the Chargers, but they hell been on Tyrod Taylor, and and I don't I don't know what's going through their mind. But if I if Cam Newton was out there, you know I understand he ain't been the healthiest of quarterbacks, but. I'm taking a chance on him. Like you said, 31 years old. 31 years old. I'm taking a chance on him, man. But when he hurt his arm, he had to change his arm angle. Okay. And a lot of times when quarterbacks have to do that, man, they're not as accurate. They don't put enough lift on the ball. They don't put enough strength on the ball to, to throw outside the numbers. And that could be problematic. But why not work him out or something? You know, I, I haven't heard anything. I'm sure some things in the working. But... If I think about him ending up on a team, I'm thinking he going to ride the pine. Somewhere like Houston, somewhere <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, him and Deshaun, you know, uh, exchanging. That uh, wouldn't be bad. No, nah, no, nah, but he, he's, he's been the guy for too long, man. He was the guy in high school. He was the guy at, at, at the Juco Blinn College where he won a championship. He was the guy at Auburn where he won a championship with them. And he was the guy, truth be told, when he first came into the league. I remember his first, his first game, he threw for over 400 yards and four touchdowns, man. He was the guy, man. He was the protege. He was supposed to be uh, the guy, especially when it comes to African-American quarterbacks, that was changing the narrative for African-American quarterbacks. And really, he did do that. But because of his stature, because he's 6'5", 240, man, and he put his body on the line, all that stuff is catching back up with him. And I think those teams are saying, hey, man, I, I just I don't know if I want to take a swing with this guy, you know. And that opportunity, those doors open of opportunity, man, they're closing. So if I'm thinking about teams, there's not too many teams I can think of, man, that he's going to be able to slide in, except when you talk about teams like Cincinnati, right, because I think Andy Dalton, he's out of there. He's out, right. Um I mean, if you, if you just if you if you do a rundown of all the teams, man, it, it's everybody has what they want. Yes, I do think if he went to New England, that would be a great look. But like you said, man, Bill Belichick has been winning for so long that egotistical behavior that he has. No, nah, right. I'm gonna use Jared Stedham, and I'm gonna show you that it's the coaching, not the quarterback, and that's yet to be seen with TB12. Uh, in in Tampa Bay, but I, I just it, I think it's gonna dry up for him, and and, and even even more, um, even more for quarterbacks like Andy Dalton, uh, who who have been starters in the league, and 
it's a shame to see it, man, because, I mean, that's just how it goes, though, man. You got all these young quarterbacks coming in the league now. They all can do with – Cam Newton can do times two, man. They're more accurate with the football. They they know how to read coverages. Think about it, man. In the state of Texas, we do seven on seven. You know. Yeah. You coach. Right. We do seven on seven, man. These kids be in sixth grade doing seven on seven. Exactly. So these quarterbacks are way smarter, man, now. Right. They're more accurate with the football because they're being taught different angle slots. They're being taught three-step drop, five-step drop, seven-step drop. You know what I'm saying? They're being taught pro-style, pro-action football, pro-action plays. And so now these guys are coming into the league, man, they like machines. So what place do quarterbacks like that have, Pop? I just, I don't know, honestly. So You, you, you know, Rich, I, just a sh shout out to uh, Dylan Petrie, my little nephew in Baytown. I know that things are rough on you right now, man, but I really do think that we'll end up with some some 707 this summer and stuff. So, man, keep Keep uh, pushing yourself in the weight room and also in the books. But, yeah, man, I uh, I feel bad for Cam because, you know, he did put his body on the line. I mean, at every level and stuff. And he's he's beat up now. And, and so maybe the best thing for him to do is to go to Houston, Texas and, and be an understudy to, to to your quarterback here, number four and stuff. And, you know, even Pittsburgh, you know, I mean, we, we, we don't really have anybody – Behind Ben, I mean, I'm not I'm not real happy with Mason. Not right now. I mean, maybe later on and stuff. But uh, I agree, Rich. It, it 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 just may be that time when, hey, he's just got to ride that pine and, and 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 come in when when needed. Come in maybe in some some packages around the goal line or when the, the starter goes down. Well, the exciting thing is, Pop, is that that is going to be unveiled here in the very near future. Shout out. Again, to all the nurses, all the doctors, all the delivery drivers, all the police officers, all the medical response, everybody who has their hand in aiding in this pandemic in the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, man, you guys are awesome. You guys are huge hearted. You putting it on the line. Again, we thank you. And we thank every each and every individual who's tuned into this show and will tune in. We thank you. Keep your ear to what it is that we have here. Trust me, don't play with it. Stay with it. You have tuned in to The Solid Grip. Y'all take care. About 27 minutes, man. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's something much better, Rich. You know what I'm saying? I think so, man, because then.